The International Day of Democracy is celebrated across the world on 15th of September each year. The day was established through the United Nations General Assembly's Resolution 10655, passed on the 8th of November 2007, encouraging member states to strengthen and consolidate democracy. Today, I encourage all parliamentarians across the common world and the wider world to consider what democracy means to them, as well as what they can do to support it in their own jurisdiction and globally. As former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan once said, no one is born a good citizen, no nation is born a democracy. Rather, both are processes that continue to evolve over a lifetime." End of quote. With the current COVID-19 crisis, greater scrutiny is rightly being placed on governments across the globe. The importance of ensuring that we as legislators represent and provide a voice to our citizens is paramount. I would like to take the opportunity to invite all parliamentarians and legislatures to share with the CPA and each other what democracy means to you. Thank you for your time in watching this video and I wish you all a pleasant day of democracy. Thank you. Ghana, like the other uh, African countries, has had a very checkered political history. Since the days of colonialism, which allowed for the exploitation of our natural resources for the development of foreign countries through slavery and so on, uh, we've not had it easy. So we've had four republics. The first, second, and third republics did not last long. The first one lasted for nine years, the second and third, collectively for less than five years. The Fourth Republic is the republic that has really endured 28 years. And with that, we have believed that indeed, uh, we have put the era of military administrations behind us. Now the institutions of state, including in particular parliament and the judiciary are flourishing. And the other constitutional creatures are also coming up strongly. Civil society organizations are also springing up and they are very loud. There's unfettered press freedom and parliament is growing strongly. However, admittedly, we need really to uh, strengthen the capacity of parliament as an institution and also build the capacities of members of parliament. There's been seven elections in this four, uh, fourth republic, which have produced five presidents and we have had successful transfer of powers from one political party to the other on four different occasions. Today, the institutions of states are responding to the tenets of democracy. It's the reason why we have course to celebrate the International Day of Democracy. And Ghana will partner the others in the diaspora and indeed in Africa to celebrate this day. Because democracy holds a lot of promise for the development of our country. I thank you all. Hi, I'm Yasmin Rotensi, Member of Parliament for the Riding of Don Valley East in Canada. I thank the Commonwealth Parliamentary Headquarters for organizing these videos on the International Day of Democracy. What does democracy mean to me? Having migrated to Canada from a country that was in an infancy of democracy, Canadian democracy to me means rights, liberty, and freedom to vote. As I participated in the political process and knocked on doors in the late 70s and early 80s, I realized that a lot of people were in my position afraid to participate in the political process. So with like-minded people, we joined the Liberal Party and created something called FALSAT, which is the Federation of Ontario Satellites. The result, we were able to garner 
two seats in the in 80s, one for a Canadian of Jamaican origin and another a Canadian of South Asian. And the fruition is in today's legislatures across Canada, there are people who are taking seats in Parliament who were initially afraid because for them, politics meant death. So democracy is freedom from persecution, the right to uh, justice, and the right to free speech. As the Vice Chair of the CPA, I am committed to promoting democracy and good governance throughout our membership, particularly in these difficult times. The COVID-19 pandemic has tested democracies across the globe as they've grappled with the need to protect the health of citizens in a crisis while maintaining the freedoms, rights and values of their democratic systems. As President of the New South Wales Legislative Council in the New South Wales Parliament, I'm proud of the way we have demonstrated our commitment to these principles during the pandemic. In the face of adversity, democracy remains paramount. The pandemic has not stopped us from meeting in person safely. In addition to scheduled sitting days, I've recalled the House on two occasions at the request of members. Firstly, to pass urgent legislation to protect the community during the pandemic. Secondly, so that opposition parties could scrutinise the government's management of a range of matters and hold it to account. Our vibrant committee system has remained active by transitioning to virtual hearings and meetings. The Public Accountability Committee has specifically inquired into the government's management of COVID-19, holding nine hearings since May. As representatives of Commonwealth democracies, we should be at the forefront of initiatives to support democratic principles, particularly during times of crisis. That is why I'm so pleased to participate in initiatives like Democracy Day. Such activities remind us of the fundamental importance of democracy. Other CPA initiatives, such as the Parliamentary Twinning Partnership, also play a role in fostering democratic values. I take this opportunity to send warm greetings to my friends in the Solomon Islands and Bougainville Parliaments, with whom New South Wales Parliament shares a twinning arrangement. As Vice Chair, I wish each of my CPA colleagues a happy Democracy Day. Kia ora, Anna. Democracy is a government where supreme power lies with the people, and this is through the representatives. Uh, they vote into the leg legislature through fair and free election. In the Cook Islands, we have 15 islands that are spread out all over the Pacific Ocean and quite difficult to travel to the far north islands, which sometimes can take seven days and to fly is about uh, four hours. It's very expensive. However, the supreme law of the country, the Constitution and the Electoral Act demand that every legitimate voter must be um, accessible to voting for the leaders of this country. And so it is the case that every four years the election is conducted in the country where the party who receives the most vote, majority vote, takes lead of the country. And that is the system in the Cook Islands. 